printed too many calendars. If you ever make a mistake, don't throw it away. Make it scrap paper. Beautiful scrap paper. Mommy's mistake now made genius. All right, where am I? What am I doing again? Why am I here? Who are we? All of life's questions answered here in the now. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Summer Myers and today, would you like to plan my homeschool year with me? So here's the thing. I need to plan my homeschool year. So I'm just gonna let you guys watch me do that. <laughs> it's something that has been on my to-do list forever and I need to get it done. And I thought, well, I'll just make a video of it and then I'll post it and that'll, that'll be that. It actually goes really well with that holiday video that I just did. So I'm, I'm not mad. You shouldn't be mad either. So let's get into it. I do not get a planner. Oh my God, I don't get a planner. I do not buy a homeschool planner. I'm probably the only homeschool mom on the planet who does not have a purchased planner. So what I do instead of getting a homeschool planner is I go to printacalendar.com and this is a free website. <laughs> There's nothing fancy. I mean, look, this ain't pretty. I mean, it really isn't because I've got forms on the back of this and I print off really cheap calendars and I scribble all over them and I mark it out on my year. And then I keep it in my binder, my homeschool binder, where I just sort of stuff everything I need in it. And this is what I refer back to. Most of it, I'm gonna be honest, is on my phone. After I have figured out and planned out our year, I put it on my phone and then I rarely refer back to this again. This is mostly just to spew out all of my brain thoughts onto this paper. It's a very ugly visual. So what I do first is I print off a four page calendar. That didn't make sense. What I do is I first print out a four month calendar on a piece of paper and I go with a highlighter and I highlight all of our um, homeschool holidays and all of our birthdays. So let's do that first. Look, I've got a cute little highlighter. Actually, I'm not gonna use this. Highlighters. Let's first do birthdays, shall we? So I don't have any birthdays in here. I've got, let's see, Michael's birthday is on the 6th. Mark that off. And then Henry's birthday is on the 17th. Mark that off. Now that I've marked out the holidays, that I've marked out the birthdays and any kind of bigger field trips that we are planning on doing, we're going, for instance, we're going to a balloon festival here in North Carolina and I wanna make sure that that's marked off so we have some time set aside for that. Those kind of things that I know are happening for sure and the time frames for them, I put down in the calendar. This does not mean that I know everything that we're gonna do this year. So I don't know necessarily if people are coming for Christmas. I have no idea what we're doing for spring break, but the things that I do know for the next like six months or whatever, I try to incorporate that into my calendar. So when I am planning my year, I can kind of adjust accordingly. So I first pick out my first day for my school year. Normally we start kind of in July. I'm just gonna be thinking. <laughs> So when thinking about what day I want to start first, I also want to keep in mind that we are going to have a tentative around 180 days planned for our school year. And I have a week or two in that 180 day schedule where if I get sick with the flu or whatever, I'm out of commission, I have some, some leeway. So I plan 180 days knowing that in the end, it's probably going to be closer to 150, 160 days. And this is also contingent on which state you homeschool in. For my state, I do not need to, I do need to keep a attendance record, but there isn't a set amount of days that I have to hit. I don't have a quota that I have to hit. This is also a good time to reference what I planned last year. So I'm gonna peek at that real fast. So our first day last year was on the 10th. Oh, I'm so excited guys, first day of school. And I do all of my markings in pencil with a big fat eraser at the end because these shift and adjust as I'm planning it out. 
So for now, I'm gonna say that's our first day. And then I'm gonna go six weeks in and then a week off. For this year, I am planning on not having any school in December. I'm not quite sure what that's gonna do to our schedule. And by taking it off, means I'm just not gonna hit our hard curriculum books, like our English and math every day. I'd like to focus our time on service, keeping my vision statement in mind. Um, I'd also like to focus our time on really focusing on what's important Christmas season, which is family and uh, Jesus's birth. So that's the goal. <laughs> so let's see how that goes in my planning. First week of January. So six weeks after into January, I'm seeing my kids' birthdays are all kind of crowded together in February and March. So rather than trying to take the week before school off for them, I'm gonna move it down one week so they can be, so that can coincide with their birthdays because that helps a lot when you get a whole week off for birthdays. Easter break, so that's Easter break. So I'm gonna split our break up into a half week. Now that I've kind of got our weeks off, what I do is I count how many weeks are actually on and I kind of want to hit around 36 weeks and that'll tell me um, how far into May or June that I need to go. I really like being done by May, but because I'm taking all of December off this time, I'm not entirely certain how that's going to play out. Thanksgiving. We need to take off time for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I have um, Thanksgiving so close. We're going to not take off the entire week for Thanksgiving. And we'll just take off three days instead. Instead of taking an entire week off for February and just take off the actual birthdays. So I kind of like how that looks. All right, so that gives me 154 days. I'm feeling pretty good about that. So if that is the case, then I should be able to finish school off. We'll say our last day will be on the 18th. And after I have become satisfied with our schedule, I put it on my phone and then I'm like, we're done. <laughs> I don't have to worry about it ever again. What I also like to do is I take a big calendar. So this is something that I printed off on Excel, they have like a calendar template, very, very basic. And I write in and I fill in everything that I planned out with this and, and make it more in depth and exactly what we're planning on doing. I hole punch it and I pop it in my binder and this is what I refer to throughout the year. Whenever I need to make adjustments, I'll probably adjust it on this because I do it pretty much all in pencil except for a couple of little highlighting things. So just to recap, what we do is I pick out a tentative first day, I mark out all of our birthdays and holidays and big school trips that we wanna take for traveling or whatever, and then I do a six weeks on, one week off, and I bump up or move down based on holidays based on birthdays or what makes sense most for our calendar uh, then I mark off our um, last day and I count off based on where we're at and where we fall and I try to give myself uh, two weeks of wiggle room in case I get sick in case I I don't know lose consciousness <laughs> that doesn't happen very often I shouldn't say stuff like that in case something happens and i can't teach for a week and that gives us some wiggle room some space to breathe i think to keep in mind when planning out your homeschool year a lot of people like basing it off of their textbooks based off their curriculum if you've got 160 lessons that you need to cover during your school year keep that in mind you could put that in we loop our schedule and we also loop our year. So if we don't make it all the way to the end, I look at the next few lessons and sometimes I skip ahead a few or we plow through them in a couple of days. Or if there's so much left, we pick it up again the following year and it's no big deal. In fact, that's what I'm doing with our math curriculum this year. We didn't quite finish. Uh, we finished our math curriculum from last year earlier than I expected. So we started our next math curriculum and halfway through and so we've got a ton more left to do and we're gonna just pick that up again. And I also try to remember that this isn't so set in stone, that I am a homeschooler and that homeschool is what we make out of it. So this is just guidelines that I float along with. 
And that's what you should be doing when you're planning out your homeschool year. That is it for me, beautiful people. I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic summer. I hope your homeschooling planning dreams all come true and that you are able to plan all of the things and not all the things. Don't plan all the things because that's so stressful. Just do some of the things. Only the things that bring you joy. Bring that into your homeschool. If this video was at all helpful, like, subscribe down below, introduce yourself in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and how you plan your homeschool year. Take it easy, everybody. Bye. Hello, my name is Summer Myers. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Summer Myers. <laughs> Let's just clarify that. My battery is dying. My battery. Shut up. It's out.